So friends, as of this coming Friday, it looks like Steve Bannon will be going to prison. And that represents at least a little bit of justice. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So earlier today, federal prosecutors filed their sentencing memo in the Steve Bannon case. Recall Steve Bannon was convicted of two counts of contempt of Congress for violating a lawfully issued congressional subpoena. And I read through the prosecution's sentencing memo and it's very well done, but there was one curiosity that was sort of buried right in the middle of the memo. But let's put a pin in that, we'll come back to it. I wanna start with today's reporting by the New York Times. Headline, Justice Department recommends Bannon be sentenced to six months in prison. And that article begins, the Justice Department said on Monday that Stephen K. Bannon, a former top aide to Donald J. Trump, should spend six months in jail and pay a fine of $200,000 after a jury found him guilty this summer of willfully disobeying a subpoena from the House Committee investigating the January 6th attack. Mr. Bannon, quote, pursued a bad faith strategy of defiance and contempt, close quote, from the moment he received the subpoena last year, seeking records and testimony about his knowledge of Mr. Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election, culminating in the violent assault on the Capitol prosecutors said in a sentencing memo to Judge Carl Nichols, who is overseeing the case. Okay, let's talk about Steve Bannon's case by the numbers. Now, Bannon was convicted of two counts of contempt of Congress, one for failing to testify and a second for failing to provide the subpoenaed documents. So the jury convicted him of two separate counts. Each count carries with it a maximum punishment, a maximum period of incarceration of 12 months in prison. It also, each count carries with it a mandatory minimum of one month in prison. What does that mean? The judge has no discretion, no lawful ability to sentence Steve Bannon to less than one month because the legislature, when it enacted the statute, the Contempt of Congress statute, and it set the punishment, it said, that the offender, if convicted, must serve at least one month in prison, but can serve up to 12 months. Okay, now let's talk for a minute about sentencing guidelines. Federal court operates under what are called voluntary sentencing guidelines. They used to be mandatory. The court ruled that they should be voluntary or discretionary, so they're now voluntary. And what they are designed to do is help guide a judge's sentencing discretion. The goal is that similar defendants who commit similar crimes should be sentenced similarly. And for a contempt of Congress charge, the guidelines say somebody should get between one month and six months. Now, given that the maximum statutory punishment is up to 12 months, a year in prison, does that guideline make sense? Not so much, but it is what it is. So the top of the voluntary federal guideline range is six months. Just put a pin in that as well. We got a couple of pins working at the moment. Now we're gonna go back to the first pin, the curiosity. Steve Bannon was convicted of two crimes of contempt of Congress. One for defying the subpoena for documents and a second for defying the subpoena for testimony. Each one of those convictions carries with it that sentence of no less than one month, no more than 12 months, and each one has that voluntary sentencing guideline high end of six months. But here's the thing. Those two sentences could be run concurrently or consecutively. What do I mean by that? If a judge runs two sentences concurrently, let's just say six months on each count, concurrent, that means the offender is only gonna serve six months because he gets to 
serve both of those six-month sentences at the same time, concurrently. Or a judge can sentence somebody to consecutive time, and that would mean you do your first six months, and then you do your second six months. In D.C., they call that running wild. The judge ran the sentences wild on top of one another, consecutive to one another. And with that in mind and against that backdrop, let's turn to the opening salvo, the opening paragraph of the prosecutor's sentencing memo because it does a really nice job. It's a little bit lengthy, but it does a really nice job of sort of surveying the Bannon case soup to nuts. So here's how it reads. The United States Sentencing Memorandum. From the moment that the defendant, Stephen K. Bannon, accepted service of a subpoena from the House Select Committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol, he has pursued a bad faith strategy of defiance and contempt. The committee sought documents and testimony from the defendant relevant to a matter of national importance. The circumstances that led to a violent attack on the Capitol and disruption of the peaceful transfer of power. In response, the defendant flouted the committee's authority and ignored the subpoena's demands. The defendant, a private citizen, claimed that executive privilege, which did not apply to him and would not have exempted his total noncompliance even if it had, justified his actions. Then, on the eve of trial, he attempted an about-face, representing to the committee that former President Donald J. Trump had waived executive privilege and freed the defendant to cooperate. But this proved a hollow gesture when he realized that his 11th hour stunt wouldn't prevent his trial. The defendant's cooperative spirit vanished. Despite the removal of the only purported barrier to his compliance, to this day, the defendant has not produced a single document to the committee or appeared for testimony. For his sustained bad faith contempt of Congress, the defendant should be sentenced to six months imprisonment, the top end of the sentencing guidelines range, and fined $200,000 based on his insistence on paying the maximum fine rather than cooperate with the probation office's routine pre-sentencing financial investigation. So what we see in the government's opening salvo in the prosecution's memo is a pretty nice, thorough, overarching recitation of what the defendant did and why he did it. But toward the end there, you heard the prosecutors asked for six months in prison. Now, they didn't specifically say whether they want six months on each count, and they didn't specifically say whether they want those six months to run concurrent with one another or consecutive to one another, which would give Bannon an aggregate sentence of one year. They simply said six months. The only other place in the memo that sheds any light on whether the prosecutors want a concurrent sentence or consecutive sentences is buried right in the middle of this 24-page memo. I urge you to read the entire thing. It's extremely well-written and persuasive. And on page 15, here's what the prosecutors say. They talk about the term under the statute of imprisonment being not less than one month nor more than 12 months. And then they say, quote, the terms may be imposed concurrently. In other words, run together. So six months and six months would equal six months, not if they were run consecutively, six plus six equals 12. They don't say anywhere else in the memo whether they're asking for the sentences to be consecutive or concurrent, but because they say we're asking for six months, that leads me to conclude, kind of by their silence or by inference, that they're just asking for six months, which would mean the two sentences would be run concurrent with one another for a total of six. I find that a curiosity. I would have liked to have seen the prosecutors explain 
why they're asking for those two sentences on two separate but related charges to be run together instead of on top of one another. But that is a minor complaint. Now, do I think Steve Bannon deserves more than six months? You bet I do. I think he deserves a year or 18 months or maybe the absolute statutory max of two years in prison. But I don't want to quibble and I don't want to detract from what was accomplished here. And I want to finish with this because I ultimately think this is a good news story. In this case, Steve Bannon, a criminal associate of Donald Trump, a, a, a lackey, an enabler, a co-conspirator in so many ways, defied a congressional subpoena, thumbed his nose at a lawfully issued congressional subpoena investigating the attempted overthrow of our government by the President of the United States. So Congress voted to hold him in contempt. And then Congress referred him to the Department of Justice, a co-equal branch of government, for prosecution of those crimes, those contempt of Congress crimes. And the Department of Justice indicted Steve Bannon. And the Department of Justice tried Steve Bannon. And a jury convicted Steve Bannon. And now a judge this Friday will sentence Steve Bannon to prison. That represents at least a little bit of justice, rough justice, some justice. And justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.